Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, June 11th, 2013. Yesterday at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference in San Francisco, CEO Tim Cook unveiled a completely redesigned iOS 7 operating system for the iPhone and iPad. Join us now to provide us with a look at the OS refresh is SiliconANGLE web producer, Mark Zamora. Mark, good to see you once again. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having me back. So Mark, start us off by telling us about the iOS's new look. Sure, so, well first off, let me just say, it's been a crazy week for technology. We have E3 going on, the Nintendo E3 conference going on right now. We had WWDC yesterday. I can't believe it's barely Tuesday. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the new look of iOS 7, We've been hearing for a long time now uh, rumors of it just being very, very flat, very, very clean, very, very modern. And those are the three words that I would use really to describe it. Flat, clean, and modern. Um, you know, we're used to kind of having that skeuomorphic design where like the notes looks like a leather bounded uh, notepad or uh, the calendar looks like a spiral calendar. But they've kind of gone away with that. There's still a little skeuomorphism in there, but mostly it's just flat now. No more of that shiny little half moon thing on the app icons. Everything is just two colors with a gradient kind of giving it a little fade. Um, all the fonts are really, really thin. So it looks really, really clean, really, really modern. And there's a lot of transparency. So there's a lot of layering effects going on. Mm -hmm. um, so basically everything that we've been hearing for the past few months has, been, has pretty much turned out to be true. Now flat, when you use the term flat, that sounds dull. So is flat a good thing in this case? Um, I think it is actually. Uh, I'm also kind of a graphic designer on the side and I've been fo I follow design trends and everybody's kind of going flat. We see flat design with uh, Windows Phone 8, also with uh, Windows, Windows 8 is also very, very flat. Um, it, it's not really dull because you also tend to use really, really bright colors as accents. Like I said, for example, the phone app icon is just a green rounded rectangle with a white phone uh, circle. So mm -hmm. it looks, it pops out, it's flat, but it pops out at the same time. So what sort of other improvements did they make? Um, it's kind of funny. There's a lot of new features in iOS 7 that as coming from Android very recently, I just made the switch, feel very familiar. So first off, we have the control center, which is uh, you swipe from the bottom and you get immediate access to things like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, volume, screen brightness. So we're very familiar with that with Android. You know, we can swipe from the bottom and we have access to all that. Mm -hmm. And they've also made uh, improvements to the notification center, which again, we're familiar with on Android where you swipe from the bottom and you have all your calls or, you know, upcoming scheduling up on there. So that's another thing that they've kind of improved on, which has existed already, but it's, it's much better now because you have, you have a daily notification thing where it has like a calendar and then you have just everything and then you have a missed column. So it's much more organized now. Um, another thing they added was, it's, some, it's called AirDrop, which is basically a way, it's coming from OS X on the uh, Mac system where you can instantly share files like pictures and videos with other phones. Um, we're familiar with this. Uh, you also may know it as S-Beam or Bump um, coming from Android phones where you can share via local connection. So we have that feature as well. Um, they've made a lot of improvements to the camera. Um, so it has built-in filters. Um, you can also swipe and pick different layouts so you have normal photo mode you swipe down and you have a square photo mode like Instagram and then you do it again and you have video um, what else there's iTunes radio which is basically like Pandora but it's on iTunes and you can build your own radio stations they've made a lot of improvements to Safari um, 3D tabs runs a lot faster it looks kind of like Chrome and then they updated Siri. So you can choose between a female or a male voice and she has some new search algorithm stuff she's doing and some new features as well. So a lot of stuff, but at the same time, it's a lot of familiar stuff, so yeah. So this is being hailed as a very significant upgrade. Would you agree with that terminology, significant? I think so, actually. Um, iOS has, been, has looked the same since it first came out and it's not improved much. If you look at Android in comparison, Almost each new iteration looks a little different, 
you know, we started off with a very simple wannabe iPhone looking thing and now we have the sleek Android 4.2 design. But iPhone has stayed the same for a long time and it's kind of felt like they've been holding on to the past and this is completely different but at the same time familiar and that's kind of the terminology they use where it's it looks different but you know how to use it immediately and that's completely true it's really intuitive so it's very significant because I think it, it's gonna it means more for their future now you mentioned that Apple's new OS has some striking similarities to Android's operating systems uh, do you think that's because they're trying to compete with them or do you think that's because they're finally catching up with Android what's your interpretation I think, you know, when Android first came out, it was the operating system for hackers, and it was really, really complicated. But as time moved on, and I've been saying this for a long time, it became intuitive. You have, oh, it just feels natural to have all these things at instant access, or it just feels natural to have this much control over this app. So I think iOS, when it first came out, was it felt intuitive because it's like, oh, a notepad, I know how to use a notepad, or a calendar, I know how to use a calendar. But now that we've had experience with smartphones, we want intuitive smartphones. So I think that's why iPhone's doing it. Is it to compete with Android? Of course. The features are almost identical. But I think it's really just because that's what consumers want, is something intuitive. So, Mark, I understand that you've already had a chance to test out the new OS. What are your thoughts? Um, I've been playing with it all day. And I, it's hard for me to put it down just because of how, number one, how beautiful it is. I mean, everything is so sleek. They, there's a lot of little details that they've added that are just like, whoa, that's really cool. Like, for example, if you're holding the phone and you kind of tilt it, the app stay there, but the background kind of moves, so it kind of feels like a window into, like, a space, which looks really, really cool. But it's also really, really functional. I mean, everything's really, really zippy. And again, coming so recently from Android, it feels very familiar, so I'm not like... When I first moved to iOS, I was like, oh God, how do I close all these apps? But now it's exactly the same, where you open up your task manager and you just swipe away, and it's like you're just slicing your apps to stop using them. It's, it's really, really great, really, really intuitive. I think it was an amazing decision from Apple, and I, have, I loved my iPhone 5 when I first bought it, but I've never been so happy with my device until I got iOS 7. Now, something that we've heard about is a kill switch functionality. Can you comment on that at all? Kill switch functionality? Oh, okay. So what it is is if somebody steals your phone, um, I'm trying to remember. I didn't pay enough attention, but I know it's where if somebody steals your phone, you can kill it from iTunes on your computer. And even if they try restarting the phone, or you know, reformatting it, it's still it's tied to that Apple ID and only that Apple ID can unlock it. So they're just trying to prevent you know, lost devices, which I think is pretty smart also. Um, they already have Find My Lost or Find My iPhone, which helps you find it if you lost it. And I actually know somebody who's recovered it using Apple's security measures. So I think the more that they're doing to improve that, the better. Well, Mark, thanks once again for joining us this morning. It's been great to have you and we hope to see you soon. Sure thing. And still to come, Walmart increases their big data ante, and Comcast gets a little more eco-friendly. But up next, we're going to try to get John Furrier back on the line to talk more about software-defined storage.